Let's be dumb. Today we are going to answer this question and uh, learn uh, how to find SQL Server agent job list uh, with schedule in SQL Server. So this can be used as an interview question as well as for your learning uh, as a SQL Server. So let's go to the SSMS uh, and take a look. As we know that the job information, schedule information, everything is in the database. So that's called MSDB. So that's where the information is uh, and we can use uh, uh, different system tables to get this uh, information so we are gonna use msdb and uh, use some system tables so I'm going to say use uh, msdb next part is uh, we have uh, to get the information related to the jobs so we have six jobs uh, system table that we can use so let's run this one what we have here we have job ID we have job name we have a uh, status of the job it is enable or disable so this tells us uh, with the one these jobs are enable and I have three jobs here so uh, you can see these three jobs are enable so you can see the description if uh, somebody has put the description in the job that will be there as well so and then it has a start step ID so it tells us from which step it is uh, starting it has other information uh, but I'm not interested at this moment uh, I'm only interested to get the job uh, names and maybe their uh, status so let's get that so give this uh, alias this one to the job and now what we're gonna do we need to get uh, schedule so select start from sys schedules so that's the table that tells us uh, uh, this about the schedules so we have a schedule ID and then we have a schedule uh, UID that's a good and then uh, we have the schedule name then owner and then tells us this schedule is enabled or not and uh, then it tells us uh, other information uh, such as uh, uh, I'm leaving these column you can take a look what exactly they are I'm um, more uh, towards these columns uh, active start date so uh, the date uh, when uh, this uh, schedule got active uh, the date when it is going to end uh, the time when it is uh, uh, going to start the time when it is going to end so these four columns are important for me I'm gonna use this one in my query now here what we see if we run both of them together we do not see any common column that can be used between th these two tables so uh, you have job ID here but you have schedule ID here if there would be job and uh, schedule uh, one of the column uh, um, common between two of them we could have joined them so that's where the concept of uh, uh, your bridge tables comes in so when you don't uh, have these uh, tables and uh, you want to create one to many or um, uh, one to one relationships you create those bridge tables so what we have here Microsoft has given us one bridge table called select star from six job schedules so that's a bridge table that will have one column from the job and one column from the schedule and that's how we can join them so let's run this one here what we have we have schedule ID so and we have job ID so this is getting schedule from the schedules job from job ID and that's how it is having some information for us so we can join that and it also has the next run date and run next time so if we need this information we can select, uh, select uh, get that so let's go back and uh, start writing our query now so how we are going to write our query select star from uh, sys jobs and I'm gonna give this one name job and then I'm going to inner join with the sys uh, dot sys ske job schedules so I'm gonna name this one SCH and now I can join job dot job ID that's coming from the sys jobs table is equal to sch dot job ID because that's the column I see right here okay so once I join this one that works fine it is gonna give me um, the job name and whatever the information I need from these two tables one more thing we are missing uh, we are missing the schedule so I'm going to inner join again sys schedules and uh, I can uh, see S C and then I'm going to join uh, SC dot schedule ID is equal to our uh, schedule ID from the SCH table that's our sys job uh, sys job schedules table so schedule ID here 
now we have all the, these joints here we need to select the column what we are uh, we, we want or we want to select here so I have a job from the job I have showed you that I want the job name I want a job dot enable if the job is enabled or disable as job status and then uh, from the schedules what I want uh, I can run if I am not sure what I want I can run here this query select everything and then I can take from there so here I, I can uh, sch dot uh, name that will give me the name of the schedule and then uh, four of the columns uh, are important that I want to select so I want to select uh, active start date end date active start time and all that so let me go and get that ch dot active give me a second sorry uh, here I uh, actually it should be SC so now we are good because we are getting the data from schedule table right here okay so we have SC dot active date we have SC dot end date we have SC dot start time we have SC dot this one okay so we got the time uh, date time and then we have uh, start time and start date so we all uh, got that information now if we run our query we will get some good information so it is telling us the job name we can always go back and say as job name now we have a job status that's enable now we have a schedule name and that tells us uh, okay what is the end date what is the end time what is the start uh, time and what is the end time so this is how you can write your query why I, I could have paste the query and just tell you this is how you can do it but I want to walk you through and tell you different techniques like how I write my queries so uh, if other columns such as we are interested uh, in these uh, two columns like next run date and uh, time we can also include here if we want to so let me include couple uh, these uh, just to show you SC h dot uh, next start date and sch dot uh, next start time so you can have that information as well okay now if we look at these information this might be confusing so you have end date 999 and uh, 31 and here your active time is uh, 23 59 and uh, 59 that's your end time and this is your uh, start date that's also uh, 2008 something uh, this is 2015 01 uh, 02 15 start time is very confusing as well so you can see 2000 uh, 20,000 you see 23,000 so the these are presented in the 24 hour clock so I they, some people call them army clock or uh, uh, that that's how they call them so 24 hour clock so it's going to be this uh, 20 means uh, not eight o'clock but it is going to be um, two o'clock so let me show you how exactly the look uh, on the schedule so let's open this first job go to schedules and now here let's compare this information with the table so we see that 215 so that's a February 15 2015 so that's uh, the the start active date so we have uh, active start date for this one right next uh, we have uh, there is no end date when you don't have end date it's gonna be 999 and uh, go like you know uh, that, that's the number you will be getting in the end date if you will have end date defined here let's say we define the end date here then uh, it is going to have that end date uh, there so uh, we will save this one and I will show you at the end now let's go to start time so you have active start time uh, um, that's uh, two, uh, three, uh, 23,000 um, right here, right? But at actually that is two o'clock in the morning and 30 minutes or past two. So that's how it is. And then you have uh, end time, that's 11, um, 59, 59. But here you will see that one uh, right here. Let me show you the time. this one 
So this is what you will see 23, 59, 59. So as it is 24 hour clock, so you will have a 23. And if you will have a 12 hour clock, you will see 11, um, um, 59, 59. So that's how it is saved. L one quick thing, let's save this one now. As we have changed the end date, uh, right now we see this one, 9999 and the 12, 31. For the, this one, we have changed to the other one. So let's see how it look like. Now we have end date is 2015 May and 13. So that's what that's how you will see the information in these columns. So don't get confused. So um, these are 24 hour clocks times and that's how you will translate them. Thanks very much for watching this video. I'm going to put the scripts on the blog as well as I will put them in the description and I will have the link of the blog in the description as well. So look, uh, looking forward to see you in the next video.